It's the 2nd of October and I'm Tom Glass and welcome to The Roast. Tonight, sweeping new anti-terrorism laws have passed through Parliament, including harsh penalties on journalists who reveal information about special operations. But since we're clearly not journalists, we can say whatever we want. For instance, did you know that ASIO was just the other... What the hell is that? So I just, I just speak into this one? OK. It's the 2nd of October and I'm Tim Glasson. Welcome to The Roast. Tonight I'll be filling in for my identical brother Tom, who is now in jail for the next 10 years. It's, uh, it's unlikely he'll last more than a day in there, but he knew the risks. Anyway, here is my com... Sorry. Mark Humphreys with the headlines. Sorry, I'll, uh, I'll get it. I'm the smart one. Prime Minister Tony Abbott has expressed his views on the burqa. Uh-oh, what did he have to say? We are a free country, we are a free society, uh, and it's not the business of government uh, to tell people what they should and shouldn't wear. Oh, thank God, because the last thing we needed was the Australian Prime Minister saying anything that could inflame tensions. I find it a fairly confronting form of attire. Um, frankly, I uh, wish it was uh, not worn. The Minister for Women there dispensing fashion advice. So he's described the burqa as confronting and has indicated he may support calls to ban the Islamic head covering from being worn by visitors to Parliament House. Gym shirts, however, still allowed. Unfortunately for Mr Abbott, his views on the burqa haven't been backed by important colleagues. Incoming Australian Federal Police Commissioner Andrew Colvin said he did not necessarily support a burqa ban in Parliament. Liberal Victorian Premier Dennis Napthine said in Victoria they see women wearing the burqa as an absolute vote of confidence in our multicultural society. And even George, people have the right to be bigots, Brandis, said he has no concerns with Muslims wearing the burqa. Sorry, Tony, I think you're pretty much on your own. Corey Bernardi renews calls for burqa ban. Kind of worse than being on your own. David Lionhelm, the libertarian crossbench senator seen here telling a photographer to get off his lawn, has used a speech in the Senate to thank smokers for the tax revenue they provide the government. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for smoking. Uh, you're welcome. Lion Helm believes that smokers pay more in tax than they should, and the people who support these taxes are a bunch of party pooping wowsers who should really just take a drag and chill out, man. Those who would tell us how to live back this flagrant theft, not because they're prone to agree with Tony Abbott, but because they're troubled by the worrying thought that someone, somewhere, may be having a good time. Yes, that's why they're worried. They hate the thought that smokers are having a good time. I think we've got some images of smokers having a good time. Now, Lionhelm is a smart guy, so to bolster his argument, he used the age-old political technique of alluding to a famous phrase. Perhaps something from Shakespeare? Along with South Park's Mr Mackey, we can agree that drugs are bad, OK? It's probably also fair to say that progressive taxes are bad, OK? I never thought I'd need to say this, but that is the worst impression of a South Park character I've ever heard from a federal senator. But why might Mr Lionhelm be so keen to see reduced taxes on cigarettes? Philip Morris donated to Liberal Democrat Senator David Lionhelm. I'm going to say that's mm, not OK. Say, David, if you're going to quote South Park characters when talking about cigarettes, I believe this one knows a thing or two about smoking. Hello, Mrs Cartman. How are you today? For the roast, I'm Mark Humphreys. Thank you, Mark. I have to say, it would have been better if Lionhelm had just quoted Kenny so that we couldn't understand anything he said. Well, next up tonight, a series of new anti-terrorism laws passed through Parliament yesterday with bipartisan support. So we can all sleep a little easier tonight, knowing we're that little bit safer. New national security legislation will jail journalists and whistleblowers if they reveal information about covert special operations. All of us except for journalists, who now have to choose between risking jail in the pursuit of truth or spending the rest of their careers writing BuzzFeed lists about how crazy George Clooney's wedding was. So what are these new sweeping powers for our spy organisations? The spy agency will now have the power to monitor entire computer networks with just one warrant. Mo monitoring computer networks? All right, to play it safe, I'm going to get off this Wi-Fi network and just work exclusively on the internet from now on. The internet is a computer network. It's a network of networks. Well, it was fun while it lasted, internet. See you later, Tom's phone. Anything else? But the most controversial element is to give immunity from prosecution to officers on special operations, providing that they don't cause death, serious injury or commit a sexual offence. 
Right, so we're basically giving ASIO officers Mario Invincibility Stars. And here you can see a simulation of an ASIO agent working his way through... Terrorist, journalist, member of the public, another journalist, bunch of citizens, and a piranha plant, who's probably a terrorist. Also, it turns out Princess Peach isn't actually in another castle. That's just a lie Mario told us so that he can get to the next world and screw their shit up as well. But you better not tell that to anyone. Most controversially, journalists who deliberately reveal special intelligence operations can be jailed for up to 10 years. Yeah, so journalists like Tony Jones better be careful or he soon may find himself hosting a new show. And while that sounds harsh, the 10-year maximum sentence for journalists was originally proposed as just one year. So who was responsible for the change? Uh, I have to assume it was someone with extensive knowledge of national security issues. Palming United Party Senator Glenn Lazarus successfully amended planned counter-terrorism laws. Of course it was Glenn the brick with eyes Lazarus. It's the perfect cover. No one ever suspects a brick. Thankfully, we can see how it all unfolded in today's episode of the long-running political children's cartoon, Lammy and the Brick. It's time for the adventures of pup senators and friends. In the Senate and out of their depth. It's Lammy, Lammy and the Brick. And Wang. In Terra Law Terra. Oh boy, Brick, time to vote on the new anti-terror laws. Brick, Brick. All those in favour of sending journalists to jail for one year if they leak information? Aye. Aye. Brick, Brick. <laughs> ten years? All in favour of ten years jail? Uh, aye. 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 You did it, Brick. You got involved in politics. Now to get rid of that pesky burka. Brick. It's not a free press if journals are in jail. That's the opposite of a free press. And where does the Palmer United Party's namesake stand on all of this? Well, it's hard to say because Clive Palmer didn't turn up to vote in the House of Reps on the laws and has distanced himself from the decision, saying... I didn't vote for that. <sighs> which is the Palmer version of, wasn't me. And it rarely is him, given he's only turned up to 19 out of a possible 202 votes in Parliament. And look, I'm not saying that every vote counts, but they do count every vote. We'll be right back. Have you ever been a journalist and thought it was important to let people know what was happening in your country? You have? Get him, ASIO! At the Roast TV or hashtag HeyAzio! So, our spies now have powers to do many more things, including illegal things, and even if they screw those things up, we're not allowed to talk about them or else we go to prison. She's behind you! Who? A spy! spy shut the f*** up, I don't want to go to prison. What the hell, kids? Now, these new laws were announced by George Brandis, and if he found the reception a little bit chilly, it's possibly because he made the announcement that members of the press could go to jail for 10 years at the National Press Club. So why is it important that we have press accountability into ASIO? Well, the Human Rights Commissioner, Tim Wilson, said there is the potential for botched operations to go unreported when ASIO really needs to be held accountable. But ASIO and its overseas counterpart ASUS don't have any botched operations and to make sure, I'll just check this top secret ASIO recording that I found sitting on a bus. In 1983, ASUS staged a hostage rescue in a hotel while masked and carrying machine guns. Oh yeah, this sounds juicy. But they didn't tell anyone at the hotel or the police what they were doing. A royal commission recommended they no longer be allowed to carry weapons. It's just great. Good one, ASUS. At least they didn't ban you wearing masks so that you can still hide your embarrassed face. In 2001, ASIO raided a house early in the morning, holding a couple captive at gunpoint. Oh, what was it? Some sort of tense interrogation? Unfortunately, they had the wrong address on the warrant. This just in, ASIO is worse than Apple Maps. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to fast forward the juicy first sentences and get straight to the mistakes. In 2007, a judge declared that two ASIO officers had kidnapped and falsely imprisoned a young medical student. God, is this the end? I hope this is the end. It's not. There are a lot more botches, but in the interest of brevity, this message will self-destruct in five, four, three, two, one. Oh, damn it. Can you just hit this with a hammer? It's useless. 
Wait, we're not broadcasting this, are we? Oh, ah, great. Let's go pack my shoes. Oh, vous voulez que je fasse quoi? Ah, ça me chiette. Bonsoir, je m'appelle Gary. Bienvenue à Le Roast. Où est mes frères? Tom, Tim. C'est un peu bizarre. D'accord. Ah, la 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 la. Bonsoir. <laughs>